Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. In this week's video I'm going to talk to you about dynamic data masking in Snowflake. It allows you to load data in clear text into a table within an existing database and then apply a masking policy which allows you to uh, mask the data in its entirety, partially mask the data or provide that value back in clear text based upon the role that's run in the query because it's all done at runtime. Really great feature. Uh, stay tuned because I'm going to take you through a demo of that as well. And don't forget guys, if you find this channel useful and you're getting good value from uh, the content, please hit the like button, subscribe. There's new content coming weekly. Okay, so let's run through what dynamic data masking in Snowflake is all about. So it's available in an enterprise edition and above. And this feature allows you to create a what's called a dy dynamic masking policy, which is an object within the database. You can then attach this particular object um, to a table or view columns, so specific columns within those uh, database objects. And that applies a masking policy uh, dynamically at runtime to any queries which reference those columns. And as we'll see in the demo in a second, you can completely mask uh, the entire value or just a portion of it or expose it in clear text if the uh, role is allowed to see it. So it's really powerful and that approach really promotes reuse and makes it easier if you need to adjust the logic in the feature, for example, for a PAI or sensitive data field. So before we jump into Snowflake, let me just talk you through the example that I've got to show you first, just uh, on a slide. So we've got three different tables. We've got a um, an orders table, which contains customer orders and a date they ordered a particular um, product. We've got a table for customers, which contains a customer ID to identify the customer and a postcode. And then we've separated out our PII data already. Um, in this case, we're just using the customer email column, which has been separated out. So what we need to do is we need to provide the business with a view um, so they can basically access the last order date for any individual customer. And some of those users aren't permitted to see the customer email address and they don't have to, they, they therefore don't need to be exposed to that data. So we need to find a way that we can mask that data at runtime. So um, this is the uh, obviously a bit of the SQL statement that we'll use then. So obviously we, we're going to expose the customer email to those people that need to see it and mask it appropriately for those roles that aren't uh, allowed to to view that data in clear text whilst you get the max order date in aliases the, the most recent order date for that particular customer and we'll see that in uh, in its entirety in the demo within snowflake in a second so how do we do this so we need to introduce a dynamic data mask and policy again a little snippet of that above so this is a particular object that we need to create in the database we can see that we create an object um, called a, a mask and policy. In this case, we're going to call it email underscore mask. It takes a value in as a string and it returns a string back. We use a case statement and we look at the current role of the user. If that role is allowed to see sensitive data, so if the um, part of a sensitive allowed role that we've defined in Snowflake, then they can see the value in clear text. Otherwise, they're going to see a range of X's all masked. And of course, you could have um, different iterations of this as well. And you could expose just a portion of the email address if you wanted. Once you've created the masking policy in Snowflake and you've got your view ready to go, you need to attach the masking policy to the view itself. And in that case, then we introduce the email masking policy to the particular column on our view. So at runtime, when that SQL statement is executed, which calls the view, that email masking policy recognizes it, checks the current role, runs the case statement, and decides what value can be retained. So let's take a look at that in Snowflake. Okay, so I've switched over to Snowflake now, and I've created the three tables, the customer table, the order table, and the customer PII data, which contains the email address, uh, as I showed you in the slide. And I've set up all the permissions as well as created a sensitive role um, and a non-sensitive role. So the sensitive the role I can access the sensitive data is called sensitive allowed role. That's what I'm using in my masking policy called email mask, which accepts a string value and returns a string. It's got the case statement in. 
that looks to see if the current role is part of the sensitive allied role. If it's not, then it will return the masked value. Uh, otherwise, it will return the value in clear text. So let's just create the mask and policy first of all. And I need to select a warehouse and database. Okay. Next, and importantly, this is where we attach the mask in uh, policy to the view itself. So I'm going to alter the view. The view is called presentation uh, dot customer last order date. This is the one that returns the maximum order date for each customer. I'm going to modify the column customer email, which exists within the view, and apply the mask and policy. Okay, so now I've uh, configured my mask and policy. I'm going to now switch to the sensitive allowed role which is allowed to view all of the emails in clear text. If I select everything from the view, what's happening there is at runtime, it's applying the masking policy, checking to see if uh, it's, who's running it. So if it's a sense of a live role, it's returning these values in clear text. If I change to the sense of denied role context and run exactly the same query again, you can see that that customer email value now is masked. And that's the masking policy doing that at execution time. If I then take a look at what the DDL looks like, I, this isn't a secure view. If it was, I wouldn't be able to view the DDL and I'll get an error. But you can see here that the customer email column uh, within the view definition isn't masked. It's just coming directly from the, uh, the customer table itself. And that just confirms that when I run the select statement, Everything's getting applied at execution time, so it's quite a neat uh, piece of uh, piece of work. So I hope you find that useful. Um, again, don't forget to like and subscribe if you're getting good value from uh, from these videos, and uh, and drop a comment below if you've got any ideas on future ones. Really appreciate it.